Hi, Rachel. Hi. Talk to me about how you're utilizing the PT Squared list. Um, students can get on the PT Squared list by requesting to be on it. And if they miss a test or a quiz, I will put them on it. So okay. they can come in and make that up. Um, if they have done poorly on a test or any kind of assessment, they can come in and work through their mistakes with me and earn a retest option. Um, another way that I put kids on the PT squared list is if there's a specific skill we're working on and I notice a handful of them are missing that skill. Maybe I give an exit ticket or some sort of assessment and they've missed it, I will invite them in to come in and work on that skill. And if I do it that way, I usually will block out a day for it. So I'll say, okay, we're working on geometric proof on this day. Other kids can come in and take tests that day, but I'm not going to be sitting down with any other group because we've got a group that's working on that. Um, but a lot of days of the week, it's just retesting or test makeup, or um, if they've been gone, they can come in. And I usually seat them around the room and I kind of bounce from student to student answering their specific questions. If I get a small group that comes in, I'll sit down and work with that group or I'll put them up front in like kind of a little U shape so we can project things and work on it. Together. How many kids on average do you get to a PT um, squared, roughly speaking? I, this year it's kind of hit or miss, like as far as am I really busy or not? Um, so I usually have five or six kids. Sometimes I'll have 10 or 12. Sure, depending, depending on, on the- Depending on if it's a busy day or not. Yep. But I, I would say five or six is very normal. If I have like a trig or calc test coming up, then I will get a group of those students that come in and want to do sure. an extra review and study for the test. What do you- like most about the PT the PT squared system as it's currently is set up. I like that there's time scheduled into the day to work with students one on one or in small groups. Because okay. in the regular classroom you have you know kids that are high flying down to kids that are really struggling and you can kind of narrow that gap a little bit because you've got those kids that you can identify and pull in and get the help from me. If so. you could change, or like if you were gonna make a recommendation for like a continuous improvement plan for the P2 squared, what would you identify as the number one area to improve on for the P2 squared process as it currently exists? I think we need to really look at which teachers are the most utilized during P2 squared and make sure that their room is a calm enough environment. And this year I have some really good students that are typically just assigned in here and working and they have a lot of teachers that they go to and there's been some other teachers that help me out. Like there's a group that likes to go in and work on art during this time and they're pretty self-directed and the art teachers don't mind that they go in there and work a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I have had in years past where I have kind of a high maintenance group and then add six to 12 extra kids that are coming in for help and it feels chaotic. So kids that sure. come in on those days don't feel like they get the individual attention they need because yeah. my attention is divided. So like if there's any way to kind of figure out like which subject areas, which teachers are like most in demand and figure out how to alleviate some of that extra pressure sure. on them during that time. That makes so sense. So that it's a nice, calm environment when they do come in. Yeah. Because it can get a little crazy. Anything yeah. else that you'd add on PT squared? Now we're um, addressing you know, 3.5. I, I have a long list of students that need to come in. And I, I help the kids that make use of it and come in and take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's some that are kind of math avoiders that try to find every, like if they're on there for English, I'm going to English because I'm not going to go to math. Yep. Um, so, and I don't know how to, how to alleviate that and catch them. Mm -hmm. I know that it's an opportunity for them that they can make use of it if they want to. Yep, that um, makes sense. And because math is in such high demand, you know, 
I sometimes track them down, but for the most part, I let them be responsible for themselves. Yep. yep. So. Cool. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah.